when they set up the system, they absolutely knew not one man in a million understands inflation. But I hope you do if you've been watching my videos. We all know what that $5 bill would buy you 10 years ago, five years ago, a year ago, six months ago is vastly different than what it will buy you today. Vastly different. And I think that really what's happening with inflation running so hot is that nominal confusion is being unmasked and public trust in government has been declining for a long time and it continues to decline. When the public loses all confidence in the system, the hyperinflation will become apparent. I think we have already started on the hyperinflation path. You know, I, I can't, I'm not saying that my, that my formulas have confirmed this, but it's what it looks like and smells like and feels like to me. And then time is going to say whether I'm right or I'm wrong. What I find particularly interesting in the gold demand trends for the full year of 2021, central banks added 82% more gold year over year. Do you think they did it with ETFs? Yeah, I don't think so. They did it with the real thing, with real gold. Additionally, global gold reserves are the highest in 30 years. Now, once they removed us from being on the gold standard, well, then they went on a path to really destroy the confidence, public confidence in gold. And they were really, really successful at it because most people don't understand its importance, but it's critically important. Central banks, obviously 82% more gold year over year and the highest global gold reserves in 30 years. What is that telling you? Not only that, but the base of buyer is broadening out where we had developed markets. Now, not the US as far as I can tell, but developed market central banks among notable buyers. I think these central banks know full well that they have lost control of inflation that we, I know they know that we are at the end of the system. Is the next system ready to transfer us into? We're about to find out because we remember we've got the LIBOR, that interest rate benchmark transition into SOFR, the new one that doesn't really work very well coming up in 2023. 2022 should be, until we hit 2023, the most interesting year that I have personally ever lived. I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel okay because I have protection. And you need protection too. I like my gold. I like my silver for barterability. It's outside of the system. It is decentralized. And most of all, it is invisible. The independence of the Fed has been damaged in recent years and that it's lost its credibility in markets. Yeah, the Fed pivot, right? The taper tantrum. I mean, come on. We've seen it time and time again. Will this time be different? I mean, it needs to be different, but will it be different? I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. Goldman's number two, question the Fed's strength to act as an independent monetary policy engine that is doing what it thinks is right and not what's expedient. Well, let's see. If they finally do do what's right, it is a big pot of doo-doo and it's not likely. It's just not likely. So what? They're saving themselves. What are they doing for you? Because there's another wild card and this goes to that 50 basis points because I just had to make this point. It's so critical that you understand this. Shifting the real funds rate. So they come out with shock and awe and they raise in March, they raise interest rates 50 basis points, a half a percent. Shifting the real rate from six point minus 6.5% from minus 
7% is not going to break the economy. And it may, in fact, help risk assets by reinforcing the Fed's credibility on inflation. The Fed has no credibility on inflation, in my opinion, and, and maybe and clearly other people's opinion because they've blown it time and time again. You know, really, I showed you the volatility chart when the Fed basically handed over control of the, of the bond market to the traders. When interest rates are lower than inflation, real yields, that minus six and a half, a minus 7%, real yields will be negative. And though the talk is tough, ooh, yeah, no more Mr. Nice Guy, oh, garbage. The policy remains easy because they will not, they do not, and I'm going out on, on a limb, they do not have the courage or the cojones to raise interest rates to a level that might, might, mind you, s slow down this inflation because we're at the end of the system. This is not rocket science when you're at the very end. You're doing desperate things because nothing you're doing is working. It's the way the system's created. So here are the inflation expectations because in a con game, we really need everybody to believe what they're saying, but they're losing control of the inflation expectations. And that means that the Fed, you know, the confidence in the Fed is being sorely questioned. And there you go. When the inflation, see if they can keep the inflation rate about 2%, they rob you, right? Every day, every day you're getting robbed of your work because that's, you know, you earn money through your work. So they are getting you to work for less and less and less, but you are volunteering it. When it's happening too quickly like it is now, well, guess what? Public notices. And when the public notices, they start to make different choices. They start to lose confidence in the system because even the increase in their wages are not keeping pace with this inflation. You could easily see when the, when the control of the bond market, the 10 year treasury market was handed over to the traders. Traders don't give a crap. They like this volatility because they make money no matter what. They destroy your retirement and your savings, but what the hey? Central banks by design destroy your savings. They force you into the markets that they create in an attempt for you to, to, to get gains better than inflation. But you know what actually does get gains better than inflation? Physical gold outside of the system, truly decentralized.